Unexpected things happen in life, to all of us, and they can come from some of the most unforeseen places. They can throw our lives into a spin, and by the end of it, we end up in a different place psychologically, or even physically, to where we started. But today, I want to tell you a cricket story about how one man handled such a situation, and his response helped define his legacy as a champion of our game. It's the 15th of December 2002, in Melbourne, Australia. The Aussies are leading the Ashes 3-0, and as was the case back then, the two teams were playing a few one days before the final two tests of the Ashes. Australia was winning the game comfortably, and it just seemed like another day at the office for this dominant side. But in the 28th over, something happens to Aussie bowler Shane Warne that throws a dagger of concern into the hearts of Australian fans. Shane Warne was one of Australia's and the world's best ever cricket players. He's one of those rare cases in sports where a player with supreme talent also has a supreme sporting IQ to go with it. He was a magician with the ball, a pioneer of spin bowling, and responsible for popularising deliveries like the flipper. But the thing that pushed Warney into the stratosphere of all-time greats was his competitiveness. In that season's battle with the old enemy, he had already taken 14 wickets and 3 tests. It fueled his battles with some of the world's greatest batsmen, to try new things with the ball, and to push Australia to the top of the cricket world. But after all the ups and downs of his career up until that point, Shane had a few issues with his body, namely his shoulder, his bowling shoulder, which he had reconstructed a few years ago. And this happened to be the same shoulder that Shane landed on in this game. The prognosis wasn't good. Shane had dislocated his shoulder, and although it was put back in place at the ground, he still needed surgery. He would be out for the rest of the Australian summer, and the race would be on to see if he could get fit in time for the ODI World Cup in a few weeks. But what would happen during that recovery period would throw Shane Warne's world into a spin, where his very career was potentially at stake. Shane's window to be fit for Australia's first World Cup match on the 11th of February was extremely tight. Perhaps due to that innate competitiveness we spoke about earlier, Shane somehow managed to get himself fit and was quickly added to the World Cup side. But just days before Australia's first World Cup game, Shane was hit with a bombshell. He had been charged with a doping violation. He tested positive for a diuretic, something that is usually used to support weight loss, but can also be used as a masking agent for performance enhancing drugs. This was massive news in the cricketing world, and just half an hour before Australia's first World Cup game, Shane was in a press conference pleading his innocence to the world. I'm shocked and absolutely devastated because I didn't take performance enhancing drugs. I never have and I don't condone them in any shape or form. I'm proud of the shape I'm in at the moment, and that is due to nothing other than hard work and looking after myself with diet. One thing was for certain, while further tests were done and this process took its course, Shane Warne was out of the World Cup and on a plane back to Australia, leaving his World Cup teammates behind. It was important for Australia, and Shane in particular, to get to the bottom of this and figure out if he did take this drug after all, where it came from. With Australian physio Errol Alcott, they checked everything, what he was eating, what supplements he was taking, and even medications, but nothing threw up any red flags. Except when Shane had mentioned that his mother had given him something. Shane recounted this in a later interview with Fox Sports. I go back to the story. Mum, I said, Mum said, come on, Harry, a few extra chins there. Let's just make sure you haven't got them. I'll take Thanks, one, of my, one of my fluid tablets, yeah. which she took for water retention and those other women things. I said, sure. So I took it, took some water and you pee a lot and, and you get rid of a few kilos. And that was it. Did, took my tablet, went to the World Cup. So when did you realise that that's what's triggered the test? When I was going through Hoodoo about absolutely everything in my toilet bag, suitcases, anyone giving you anything. And that's the only thing I could think of. And so anyway, we said, what's the name? I said, I wouldn't have a clue what the name of it is. So we ring my mum and um, I said, what's that called? And she said, it's called Moduretic. So we look it all up and it then comes in, it's a um, masking agent. It can be, yep. it can also be a masking agent. Well, this lined up with the results of the test and showed that perhaps he didn't take any performance enhancing drugs per se. The Australian Cricket Board's anti-drug policy was clear. Shane had taken something on the banned substances list and needed to pay the consequences. They were emphatic with their punishment. Shane was given a 12 month ban from organized cricket. He couldn't even play for his local club St Kilda, let alone for Australia or Victoria. With the taking of a pill that his mum gave him to look better on camera, Shane Warne, at least for the time being, was banned from playing the game that he loved. Ah! Oh. Wow. So what does the world's best leg spin bowler do when he's not allowed to bowl leg spin? Shane didn't wallow in self-pity, far from it. In fact, there were no shortage of job offers for Shane. The most high profile of which was a commentary job with local broadcaster Channel 9, which he took to like a duck to water. Another one was as an unpaid leadership advisor to his favourite AFL team, the St Kilda Saints. 
Shane used this time to keep the fire going strong, and as February 2004 rolled around and the ban was lifted, Shane was an automatic selection back into the Australian squad. He was also on the verge of something truly historic. You see, the bowling world was dominated for the past few decades by the fast bowler. From the vaunted West Indian attacks of the 70s and 80s, right up to the white lightning of South African Alan Donald, and the two-headed Pakistani viper that was Wakar Yunus and Wasim Akram. Up until that point, only one bowl had ever taken 500 test wickets in their career, West Indian great Courtney Walsh. Now on 491 wickets himself, Shane Warne had the opportunity to reach this milestone and become the first spin bowler ever to do so. And what better place to do it than the spin bowling mecca of Gaul International Cricket Stadium in Sri Lanka. What made this even more spicier was that being in Sri Lanka, he would be facing off against one of his true rivals, Mutai Muralitharan. Mutai was on 485 wickets himself and therefore wasn't that far off the record either. The Sri Lankans had prepared an atypical subcontinental pitch, bone dry and expected to turn heavily. They had selected Chaminda Vas and four spinners, including Murali. Not to mention the batting lineup, which included some of Sri Lanka's all-time greats. Jayasuriya, Sangakkara, Jayawardena, and Dilshan. Australia won the toss and elected to bat, but found it tough going on a pitch that was keeping low and spinning from day one. Despite starts from Australia's top four and a Darren Lehman 63, Australia were bowled all out for 220. With two wickets from Kumar Dharmasena, yes, that Kumar Dharmasena, and a six for Framurli, his 40th five-wicket haul in 86 tests. When Australia started bowling, it became clear that although this was his first match in over a year, Warney would be the main anchor for the Australian bowling attack. His 492nd test wicket was Sanath Jayasuriya pinned in front LBW on 35. He didn't get his second until the 95th over, getting captain Hashan Telekaratna on 33. By then, Sri Lanka already had a lead of over 100 and him, along with Stewie McGill, set about getting rid of the tail. Oh, that's a good delivery. Wonderful delivery. A perfect uh, leg spinner's delivery. Sri Lanka were bowled all out for 381 runs and had a commanding lead of 161. Warney ended with 5 for 116 of 42.4 overs. Between six bowlers, Shane Warne had bowled 31% of the entire innings on his own, taking his overall wicket tally to 496. Given the state of the game, this 161 run lead might have felt like 261 runs. But through days three and four, Australia began to slowly grind their way back into the game. Openers Langer and Hayden put on a 91 run partnership for the first wicket of 174 balls, 106 of which were eaten up by Justin Langer on his own until he was out for 32. The next partnership after that took Australia past Sri Lanka's 161 run lead. And for every partnership that followed, Australia pushed themselves further and further ahead in the game. By the fifth wicket, this lead was extended to 319 runs, and Australia eventually declared on 8 for 512, setting a massive total of 352 runs to win. Although the headline to this test would be a massive Australian fight back, which it was, there was one constant through that entire innings for Sri Lanka, Muralitharan. He ended with 5 for 153 of 56 overs. This showed that the real underlying theme of this match was a tussle between the two best spin bowlers in the world. On day five, for Warney, the equation was simple. If he wants to take this record in goal, he's got one day to get four wickets and hopefully in the process, help Australia to pull off this stunning comeback. He was given the new ball to open the bowling and with his trademark walk to the crease, the rest is history. Well, that's the first one that really has turned and bounced. It's a big shot for LBW, and he's gone. And you've got quality spinners coming in on a fifth day wicket. It's uh, it's hard yards. Yeah! And there it is, a fantastic delivery from Shane Warne. Sweeps it straight up the air. Andrew Simons is under it, and there is wicket number 500. Well done, Shane Warne. Absolutely fantastic stuff. The boys on the hill celebrate. There it is. Matty Hayden, another catch for him. Straight to it. Shane Warne guided Australia to a stunning comeback victory, winning by 197 runs. His figures for that innings was 5 for 43 off 15 overs. He had taken 10 wickets for the match and in the process, become the first spin bowler in history to take 500 test wickets. A feat that has blazed the trail for spin bowlers henceforth. 
For people that watched him play, it's quite simple to describe what had just happened. This was, quite simply, a Shane Warne moment. A time when he took the game by the scruff of the neck and pulled Australia towards victory. For Shane, an unexpected shoulder injury followed by a drug ban had thrown his life into disarray, where he couldn't do the one thing that he loved to do more than anything in the world. But he didn't allow it to change the trajectory of his life. He came through the other side of it, every bit the bowler he was beforehand. And ultimately, this is what defines Shane Warne as a person, a competitor, an innovator, a champion. Rest in peace, King.